Hello everyone and welcome. Today I'm in northern Utah in Cache County documenting some of the old towns along the Utah-Idaho border. Right now I'm in Trenton. What's today the city park or the town park was once where the old red brick schoolhouse stood. And you can see a picture of it there. 1892 to 1964. And here on display is the original bell. Looks like it gets rung every now and then. But across the street is the old post office. There on the corner is an old gas station. On that corner is the new post office. And over here is the old uh, mercantiles or markets, bank as well. Let's have a look at them. Here's the old post office, post office Trenton. And presumably it is now a part of this property here with this grand old house. Got some broken windows. Presumably that post office was in operation up until the new one across Center Street here was constructed. But I really like this building here. The old garage with the accompanying gas station. Isn't that fantastic? Right there along the the concrete footing there is where the gas pumps would have been. <clears throat> see if you can see any of the... No, I can't see any of the screws. Oh yeah, there they are. They're right on the edge. You can see where the old pump was. Circular pump. Not surprising. But just how tiny this was compared to modern gas stations. It looks like they had lights all around the top here. A lot of Fords on this property. I guess the current owner, owner sure likes Fords. Sure wish I could see a picture of what this looked like when it was operating as a gas station. I just love this old gas station. Here's the post office that replaced the old one. Not too much bigger, in all honesty. Looks to be the, the town hall. Then over here we've got what was first a bank and then later a market. And then the one on the right, not sure what that was. But over here on the side we've got some neat old wall advertisements. Don't know if you can read that too well. It says West Cash State Bank. Paid on time deposit. And then later on it was apparently Merrill's Market. These days it uh, looks to be a private residence got private property, no trespassing sign, so clearly I'm not the only person to take an interest in this old building. Kind of twin markets. But it looks like that <clears throat> looking beyond the curtains there, it's just a big old space with the lamps and there's a ceiling fan in there, so it's not been walled off in there. You can kind of see the windows on the other side. And then over here is a more modern mural of the mountains. 
and a faded sign that says goods. That's all I can make out. Looks like this was the place to get soda. It's no power, not surprised. But across from the public Pepsi dispensary is this other old building. Wonder what it was. It's a building that fronts Main Street, so it had some social significance. I wonder if it was a livery stable or even later a garage for early automobiles. These double doors would have been wide enough to handle a carriage, and they're definitely tall enough. That window up above, I think, might have served as a form of ventilation, common to houses and places at the end of the 19th century. I don't see that it was ever connected to power, though. Well, there's a, some underground power there, so maybe it was underground. Anyway, it's another old interesting building here in Trenton. Here's a very early rough cut, rough cut log cabin. Just a one room setup with a loft. Had power later on. And sometime they uh, replaced the chinking. But peering up through the upstairs window, you could see wallpaper. I can see wallpaper. So it was lived in at least perhaps through the middle or end of the last century. Doesn't look to be in too bad a shape. Well, I've strayed north just a ways and ended up in Weston, Idaho. This is a Daughters of the Utah Pioneers Monument. Erected 1941, honoring uh, the initial families that settled this area. But what I'm curious to know is, what is this up here? There's a piece of petrified wood. But what is this round thing? Looks like it's shaped barbed wire because why not then over here we've got another monument got this fountain erected in memory of old Weston High School 1916-1946 yeah that that didn't last long I guess it was here on the side of this church but here on Main Street's this old gas station I wonder what kind of gas was pumped here if it was a local gas or a national gas could have been a mixture of both There's a new gas station, Sinclair. And the city office. Before we go to the city office, I want to have a look at this other building here. Let's have a peek in the... In this gas station looks like we can. Shell motor oil. This has been the front office slash sales floor. And then over here, of course, would have been the garage. So it looks like this city office is still in use, though. I would tend to doubt that this was always the city hall or city office. Could have been. I just don't know. Just a room with chairs and chalkboard, public information, budget, sexual assault awareness month, upcoming meetings. It's kind of cool that this old building's still in use. I'm now in Lewiston, standing out in front of this old false fronted store, and with the help of insurance maps, I'm able to tell you what used to be here. In the 1920s, this was vacant, so I really don't know what it was originally when it was built. But walking down the sidewalk, this was a barber shop, at least in the 1920s and through the 1930s. Across the way here, I don't know if you can see that uh, that Chevy 
kind of behind the, the blue trash can there, that's where the old post office was. And where the gas station is now was a meat market and a small grocery store that looked similar in style to this false fronted building here. Then in the early 1930s, late 1920s, somewhere around there, um, they knocked down the grocer and installed a gas station. And there's still a gas station there today. Over here in this vacant, well, this parking lot now, there was a lunch counter where you could get your beer and your lunch. It was similar to this, again, false fronted long building there. Now in the 1930s, this was Thurs Market in the 20s as well. And now it is Julie's Marketplace today. So it's kind of neat to see a con continuity in building use. This is kind of the heart of town. Across the street here, sorry for the sun, is uh, an LDS church that was uh, reconstructed in the 1930s. And across the way is the old Lewiston State Bank. And there was a billiards hall over there as well. And some other things I'll show you here in a second. Here is the old Lewiston State Bank. Definitely looks like a bank building. That classical bank architecture. Looks like it's vacant. Let's have a peek in. Wow. You can see the old bank vault there, right in the center of the, the wall. And check out the wood paneling in the sort of breezeway here. That's, that's incredible. It's really cool that this has, has lasted this long. I'm looking up, you can see lights that were maybe from about the 50s or 60s. So uh, this must have been at least a branch bank of a larger bank somewhere into the mid 20th century. That's neat. <clears throat> But then this building adjacent to the bank here, this on the left was a pool hall. So if you wanted to have a good time and relax here, play some pool, you'd enter the door here on the left. And in the middle, this is a stairway that led to the apartments above. And this was a drugstore, sort of like local Walgreens. those old aluminum awnings. Classic small town America street corner. And then this section of buildings here, according to the insurance maps at least, has always been uh, like a community center. Up until the 20s or 30s, this appears to have been vacant. But, see if I can show it to you without getting run over. Love this old advertisement on the side of the brick building here. Don't know if you can make it out. It says, the Lewiston Drug Company, Kodak's, the, this looks like a fancy R. I'm not sure what that is, but love that old painted advertisement. So these are still your city administration buildings. Looks like this one was built in 1934, probably during the depression as a reliefs project. Looks like they still, well, they show movies here now. I don't know that they always have. Oh, there's a ticket window. Admission Monday nights, $10 per family, immediate family only, all other tickets, ages three and up, $2 each. Except cash or checks only, doors open at 6.30 p.m. So it looks like that ticket window's been there 
quite a long time. So I don't think it was original to the building, but probably came along not too soon after it was completed here. So it looks like it's still a functioning community movie theater. That's awesome. But over here behind this building on the edge of this block, I'm hoping there's still uh, one building remaining. I'm not sure what this was. Seems relatively new. But nope, it is no longer here. So back here is what I was hoping was here, but thought was gone. Ran into some locals, showed them the insurance maps, and they said, no, it's still here. It's the old jail. A lot of cold air coming out. Wouldn't do this otherwise, but the locals show it's open. Do not enter, or you will die. Check this out. The old Lewiston jail. None of these cells have windows. And it's said that uh, uh, a drunk froze to death in here once. Over here is the water fountain. The toilet, I don't know if you can see it, it's kind of back there in the corner. But this was the old jail. Really neat, heavy, heavy bars. The old really thick lock. Just love it. Love that this is still here. It's just amazing. It's storage now. You can't see any beds exactly. I'm sure they're, oh yeah, I can. They were fold up beds that you could fold up against the wall. Looking around here in the back side of the building, looks like there was some heating that was installed perhaps after the unfortunate freezing death. But you can see this is the window above the toilet. How thick the walls were, they were meaning business. Just a thick concrete roof with steel trusses. And a tiny windowless jail. So if you were visiting Lewiston, Utah, in say 1920 or even into the 30s, you would stop here. This is the old train station. And today it's a private residence. So these railroad crossing markers are original to the site. But it was an electric railroad spur. So the spur came up here, would stop here, and then would go back. Now the railroad, or most people called it a trolley, it was a trolley that ran from Ogden, Utah, up to Preston, Idaho, which is quite a distance, and it stopped here at different points in Cache Valley. Let's take a quick peek into the backyard here, see if that can unveil any more relevant information. Uh, here's a, it's just a concrete drainage ditch or little canal. But also in this area, right around here, I'm not totally sure where exactly, but there was a lumber yard here, Anderson Lumber Yard. Some of these sheds might be related to that instance. But whoever lives here is, definitely has a turn for the arts. Really like the old signage. US Royal Tires, batteries and accessories. Can't say I'm familiar with Daniel Webster, except the author. But I wonder how they've restructured the interior to meet, uh, make it a, a modern house. Anyway, 
This is the old train station. Now I'm here at once was the Amalgamated Sugar Company. Today, it's a Presto food factory. Sugar production here in Cache Valley and Southern Idaho was an important part of the agricultural processes that happened here. Here you can see the remnants of a line that once belonged to the Oregon Short Line Railroad. This line was built for the sugar factory here to transport processed sugar from the factory into the wider markets. And there is the uh, old factory. There are very few buildings inside the factory complex that are original to the factory complex. But over here in what is now a pivot field was a field that housed tens, hundreds of tons of beets. And they had an interesting system to manage their beets. They had an elevated rail platform that came up through the middle of the field here and it would dump beets out on either side of the platform. Then on either side of the platform they had a, a conveyor system that would drag beets up to a flume and the flume would send the beets down towards the factory for processing. Now over here to the left of the factory you can see some houses. It's essentially one street of houses. Now I don't think any original houses exist along the road but those houses were constructed to house employees of amalgamated sugar. There was also a hotel over there and the hotel has been gone nearly a hundred years now. But I find it interesting that Amalgamated Sugar found it necessary to house employees right next to the sugar factory when Lewiston, you know, the, the closest town is only a few miles away. So in essence, this was a tiny sugar town. Now we're just uh, near the town of Richmond along the old uh, railroad track. This was probably part of the Oregon Short Line Railroad. I'm sure now it's part of the Union Pacific. But here we have another old factory of some kind. The tower there makes me think that this too was another sugar factory. but it's really interesting and beautiful in its decay. I really don't have any idea as to when this went out of use. Crikey, I'm stepping on crap. But man, it's long. Also, I really like that sort of bell tower up there. That was pretty intricate and you've got triangle cuts of glass that would have been custom fitted into there. I'm also not sure at the moment if this was part of the Amalgamated Sugar Company. But uh, looks like what happened was there was another, well looking down, you've got this railroad spur and then we've got room for more railroad spurs up closer here. So the railroad could have cut off right there on a switch and the cars could have been brought in and loaded and unloaded, things like that. That shingled tower is cool too. I wonder what purpose it had. But I've driven around the building and I haven't seen anything that tells me its name. Which is kind of curious. A lot of times on the smokestack they would have their name going up and down. But on this one there's nothing. Judging by those big bricked in windows, it was built during a time when a lot of natural light was needed. So we're probably looking at an uh, original construction of the turn of the 20th century. And then it was used and upgraded 
I don't know, my guess would be through the 1950s or 1960s. But, really neat stuff. Well, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.